Welcome back, Grade Fours, to WorksheetCloud.com's online lessons. I would like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome any of our new viewers for today. I hope you came amped because it's going to be a pretty cool lesson. Again, I hope. This time I won't be rapping Grade Fours, um, and but thinking about the rap for the other day, I was thinking about the fact that you're all at home during this lockdown, and maybe it's time that you start a journal or do something creative creative during your time so that you can really get into writing about your feelings or drawing whatever you prefer um, but at least try something new because I was terrible at the app I, I know that but um, I tried it you know and I, I wanted to make it a little funny or exciting for you guys and it made me think that sitting at home we need to cultivate our talents we need to cultivate our minds so let me try and motivate you to start writing. Write on how you feel, even if you just want to draw smiley faces. Or I think it will be just good to get how you're feeling out on paper. Anyway, um, getting into this lesson. If you have any questions about this lesson or any of my other lessons, please send an email to grade4 at worksheetcloud.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can after this lesson. Um, great fours, I am excited to get into this lesson and I hope you are too. So today's lesson is about verbs or verb types, okay? So we have focused on verbs here and there, especially when it came to sentence today. So I have touched on it previously. However, what makes this lesson different, Grade Fours, is that we're actually going to be looking at verbs and then going into details with the different kind of verbs that you get. We are not going to go through all of them because there are quite a few, but we're going to go through a few main ones. And I hope that you um, have your pencil or pen ready because we're going to be doing some um, practical activity after at, or at the end of this lesson. So the lesson outline for today is as follows. We are going to do sentence today. Yes, grade fours, I know you missed it so much. Better than the rap, I think. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to look at what are verbs, and I'm going to go into a bit of detail about that. We're going to look at finite verbs, the infinitive, auxiliary verbs, imperatives, and then we're going to do an activity like I said in the previous slide. So without wasting any more of your time, Great Fours, let's get started with the lesson. So a sentence a day. We're going to be looking at parts of speech. I'm putting the sentence up on the screen now, Great Fours, and I want you to write down the sentence. So take a few seconds, write down the sentence. If you don't want to write, shout out the answers um, and just write down what the different parts of speech of the sentence is. So, go. So the sentence says, everyone clean their own classroom. Okay, so that is the sentence. As you can see, grade fours, there are, a spe there are specific types of um, parts of speech in the sentence. So, so I hope that as you can see, grade fours, there is a specific type of part of speech in the sentence. So I hope you caught on. As you can see over here, the sentence says, everyone clean their own classrooms, okay? So everyone would be a pronoun. Very good. I think you all got it right. And then cleaned is a verb because it's a doing word. They, they is a pronoun. Own would be regarded as an adjective because it's describing the classrooms. And then the classrooms is a common noun. So I hope you got that grade fours because you're so used to our sentence today already. So, what is a verb? 
a verb is a doing word. It expresses an action. So when we are trying to figure out what a verb is in a sentence, we ask ourselves, can I? So when you are looking at a sentence and you can't figure out what the verb could possibly be, grade fours, you ask yourself, can I? Can I jump? If the answer is yes, then it is a verb. So you ask yourself, can I jump? Yes. So it's a verb. Can I cry? Yes. So it's a verb. Can I climb? Yes. So it's a verb. Can I chair? No. No, I can't chair. So that can't be a verb. Can I run? Yes, I can run. And therefore, it is a verb. So basically, I was doing the very basics of verbs for you grade fours, especially for those of you out there that are still a bit confused as to how to identify a verb in a sentence. I hope this makes it a little bit more clearer that a verb expresses an action. And when you want to know what the verb is in a sentence, ask yourself, can I? And that surely will help you find the answer. We are now going to look at finite verbs. Now remember, verbs are doing words. So finite verbs will still be doing words. However, it is a type of verb. And that's what we're going to look at now in the following few slides. We are going to be looking at different types of verbs. Not all of them, like I said before, but we're going to look at the main few. So, a finite verb can stand on its own and does not need a helping verb. Over here, I've indicated what a helping verb is called, an auxiliary verb. Please bear that in mind for later in the lesson because we're going to be looking at auxiliary verbs as well. So, a finite verb does not need an auxiliary verb. So, a finite verb does not need an auxiliary verb. For example, she plays. They played a game. So, those sentences show that you don't need, that they don't need helping verbs in the sentence. The verbs are standing on their own. And lastly, we walk home from school. Again, there is no helping verb in the sentence. I hope that makes sense. The infinitive. So, by now you're probably thinking, if a finite verb does not require an auxiliary verb or a helping verb, therefore, the infinitive has to require a helping verb. So, let's see. When a verb is preceded by the word to, it is regarded as the infinitive. So, the word preceded means that it is before the word. So, when the word, the verb, has the word to before it, it's regarded as the infinitive. The infinitive cannot stand alone. It must be preceded by the word to. So, in other words, I can't just take the verb out of the sentence without the word to because it needs that word to make sense. For example, to play, to fight. And then I also placed it into a sentence to help you understand better. He wants to learn how to play soccer. So the word to over here indicates that this is now the infinitive. Now previously in one of my lessons, I made a mistake by saying the word to was a preposition. However, the word to in the sentence is not the preposition. It is, the, it is therefore known as the infinitive. But if the word to is somewhere else in the sentence, then it is a preposition. So please be careful for that, grade fours, because I also made that mistake. Auxiliary verbs. Remember, I told you earlier in the lesson, please remember that word. So, auxiliary verbs are helping verbs, okay? They are known to help 
the normal verb to make the sentence make more sense or for you to understand the sentence better. It always precedes a verb. There is that word again, precedes. That means it always comes before the verb. And I thought to make things a bit easier for you, I'd add in some common auxiliary verbs like am, are, can, could, had, as, have, is, may, might, must, shall, and should. These words you must be looking at and thinking, wow, I've noticed these words in sentences, but I never thought about what part of speech they could be. And a lot of the time, children get completely confused when you are asked the question in an assessment. Identify the part of speech, the word are, and then what is that? Now you know, grade fours, that those words are regarded as an auxiliary verb or a helping verb. They help the verb to function in the sentence. For example, they are walking over the field. So they are, there's the word are, walking over the field. The word are is an auxiliary verb and it's helping the verb walking, okay? So without the word are in the sentence, it wouldn't make sense. Imperatives. Now, for our next lesson, imperatives are very important. So please pay attention. Imperatives are bossy verbs. They tell you what to do. Like, clean your room, sit still, be quiet. Those verbs are, they give an instruction and they are mostly used in instructional texts. So you think to yourself, what is an instructional text? Well, like a recipe. When your parents or somebody is baking a cake, there is a certain um, instruction that you have to follow in order to make the cake a success. The same with directions. If you don't have the proper directions, you will get lost. So imperative verbs or bossy verbs, they are used in texts like that. For example, fetch the ball, turn left. As you can see, the bossy verbs are most of the time in front of the sentence because it's instructing you to do something. Some of you will also notice that you use it in a command as well because imperatives always or most of the time are found in the beginning of a sentence. So, like I said before, clean your room, sit still. The, word, the verbs are now right in front of the sentence and they are giving an instruction. So, that is what an imperative is. So far, grade fours, we've learned about verbs, finite verbs, the infinitive, auxiliary verbs and imperatives. Now, in the next section, or at least towards the end of this lesson now, we are going to do it in practice. We're going to look at our sentences and try and find the different verbs in those sentences. Remember, it's not always going to be there when we do it practically, but it will at least give you an idea of how to find the verb when you are doing it on your own. So let's get into that. Identify the verbs in the following sentences. Nick had to fetch the music box. Cindy ran late to her meeting. Callie smiled when she won the competition. The children laughed at the teacher. I am afraid of the dark. He is jumping over the wall. I'm going to give you a few seconds, grade fours, to try and find the verb in those sentences. And then I'm going to do it with you. Please get your pencil or pen and page ready and start doing the activity practically. Again, 
it's not compulsory. If you want to just shout out the answers, you may do so. So, get started, grade fours. Okay, so I'm going to take my pen out now. I'm going to take my pen out. Oh gosh, there I went past the, the page. I'm going to take my pen out now. I'm going to choose a color. And then I'm going to now do it with you. You know we've done this before, grade four. So um, we are going to do it together. And then you're going to see if you were right. So Nick had to fetch the music box. So I can now already see. So. Nick had to fetch the music box. Had to fetch. So my verb in the sentence is the word fetched. Fetch, okay? But I can see that this is an infinitive. To fetch. So I have to underline both words. And then the word had over here or had over here. This is an auxiliary verb because it's helping the verb along in the sentence. So here you can see there are two or three different verbs in the sentence. Cindy ran late to her meeting. What is the verb in the sentence? I asked myself, can I? Can I, Cindy? No. Can I ran? No, but can I run? Yes, so you can also have to think about the verb tense because the sentence now is written in past tense. So the word ran is still a verb, but it's the past tense version of the word run. So can I run? Yes. So therefore, that is my verb. And grade fours, here's an example of the word to. Remember in this sentence over here, the word to fetch is known as the infinitive. but here the word to her meeting, the word to over here, is now no longer the infinitive, it is a preposition. So it's very, it's very important for you to read the sentence carefully when you are looking at it or when you are trying to break up into parts of speech. Kelly smiled when she won the competition. Kelly smiled. The verb is smiled. And there is no auxiliary verb, it's not an infinitive, and therefore it is a finite verb. Just like the word ran over here, finite verb. The children laughed at their teacher. The word laughed is the verb here, and as you can see, grade fours, again, there's no auxiliary verb, so therefore it is a finite verb. I am afraid of the dark. The verb over here is afraid and the word am is helping the word the verb afraid so therefore this one is an auxiliary verb and i'm going to put an a on top over there so that you can see the word am now in the sentence is an auxiliary verb he is jumping over the wall the word jumping is my verb okay can i jump yes so therefore that one is my verb and the word is over here is helping the verb help the sentence make sense so therefore the word is is an auxiliary verb i hope you got that all grade fours Okay, so remember, you can send any questions about this lesson to grade 4 at worksheetcloud.com. And an activity is provided for you after this lesson. Grade 4s, I surely hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it made sense. And remember, can you? And if you can, it's a verb. So from me, Mrs. Nicole Frank, I wish you a wonderful day further. Please look after yourselves. Goodbye.